The last episode of printed photography pickups was not that long ago. So a next one already? Yes, because I have no self-control and because we're still in lockdown. So basically all I can currently spend my money on is film, cheap takeout and photo books. Hello and welcome to another episode of Printed Photography Pickups, a series over here on this channel where I'm showing you all of the things that I have quite recently picked up that are photography related and printed. The things that I'm going to show you in this episode today are, I would say, pretty diverse and how can I put this? I had to censor quite a lot of things, so let's dive right in. The first thing I would like to show you is something that I accidentally stumbled upon while browsing Facebook. I am a member of several analog photography groups, but also groups where people can show their self-published work. And as I was browsing the site, I stumbled upon this really interesting looking zine, which I, by the way, hope to pronounce right, called L'Inferno Dentro by Nicola Stradiotto, an Italian photographer and mixed media artist. One thing I particularly like about the scene is the selection of different images. I think he did a wonderful job in choosing and kind of arranging the sets of images here because you can see a really interesting repetition regarding color and regarding form. But more than that, I think there are many images that just look fantastic on their own as well. And there are some images that I would actually also like to have as a bigger print, as for example, the images on the side here, which is definitely one of my favorite spreads of the whole zine. One thing I also really like to do when getting my hands on a printed publication is to take a look at the title and see if there is something that corresponds with the images that are inside. And with this zine here, L'Inferno Dentro, I think uh, loosely translated means something like hell inside or inner hell, which I think is a really interesting selection of a title, which I can also kind of feel in the individual images, but also the whole kind of setup and arrangement of the whole zine. Another thing that this zine kind of taught me is that you don't have to go out all expensive and fancy when putting something out there. But sometimes, just like he did, a simple stapled zine is the best way to get something out there and get something printed that is affordable, efficient and um, still can turn out really wonderful. So thanks for reminding me that simple is sometimes the better way. Talking about randomly finding things over Facebook is kind of a pattern here because the next magazine was found in the same way. In one of the photography groups I saw that a guy named Ben Bernschneider was doing a raffle to give a couple of copies of his newest magazine out for free. And of course I'm always all ears when it comes to printed stuff, but let's face it also free stuff. So of course I tried my luck and what can I say? I got lucky, which I usually never do, and I got a free copy of the red issue of the Raw magazine, which is the first one of a whole series of six. A quick little parental advisory disclaimer first, because I want to mention that this magazine contains explicit content. I censored everything for you, so I won't get kicked out of YouTube for showing you this, but if you think about picking this up yourself, please keep in mind that this magazine contains nudity, sexuality, drug abuse and also violence, so just be aware. Before we start, a couple of words about Ben Bernschneider, whose real name, by the way, is Jonas Bernschneider, who is a photographer, videographer, director and author from Germany, who also, at least in German, has his own Wikipedia page, which I think is pretty cool. Over the years, Ben has brought out a lot of books and was also kind enough to send me a copy of his newest book that we will talk about in the next episode. In 2019, he also published a book called Voyager and as I understood, the Raw magazine is kind of a spin-off from the Voyager book. So in the Raw magazine, we have this protagonist called Tom Staubach, who may or may not be an alter ego to Ben himself, who knows. And the storytelling element in the scene or magazine is really, really unique. And I think I haven't seen something similar before. Okay, I cannot show you this one. Because you get all those kind of puzzle pieces that you have to put yourself together on your own, in a way. There's like details about this character, details about the story, but the lines of what reality is or what fiction is, what an over-exaggeration is, or even what a kind of stylistic element of a drug rush is, 
that make everything really blurry, which I think makes up for a really interesting experience. Also visually, I think the magazine is really interesting because you have all those handwritten notes, which um, by the way are in German, combined with those kind of elements that remind me of old American comic books, which kind of make it also a pleasing experience to look at. I also have to say that I got so curious and so hooked on the whole story, on the character and what's gonna happen next, that I already pre-ordered, this time from my own money, no uh, ruffle this time, the second issue, the white issue of the Raw magazine, so I'm really excited what's gonna come and in total there will be six um, issues, six magazines out there and I think I'll probably stick to all of them and see where this is going. Next up we have this book here called Streets by Jan Zöbisch, a German photographer based in Trier, uh, who I found through Instagram. The cause of the book I think is a really really good one because he put this together and sold this to raise money for the survivors and victims of the Trier attack that happened on the 1st of December 2020 where five people were killed because I really value when artists use their creative engagement and their kind of uh, support for causes like that. For me, it was also a no-brainer to support this project. Apart from the good cause, I also think that the book itself is really, really good. Have a little postcard here. As the title suggests, this is a book containing street photography, all taken in or around Trier. You can see in here that there are just beautiful images of people living their life on the street. It has a very vivid and kind of lively character to it, which I think, at least for me, kind of contrasts the terrible incident that happened in December 2020. And for me, it serves as some sort of memorial for all the beautiful things that are happening on the streets as well. All of the images in here are black and white and I think mostly shot on film, but I think there might also be some digital images amongst those, which for me capture the really, really beautiful city of Trier very well. Trier is a very historic city, which if you ever make it to Germany is definitely worth a visit. And the book also shows me that he's an amazing street photographer that knows and really loves the city well. The book is still available, so if you are into street photography, if you are into beautiful black and white images, you can still get your hands on a copy of this book and also support a good cause. Talking about using your photography for a good cause, here comes the next one by UK-based photographer Luke Bather, who used the month of December 2020 to donate all the money he would make from this print to an organization called Gendered Intelligence, who are supporting trans youth in the UK. The selection of the image I think he chose very wisely because I think this is a really, really good choice for the cause. And I also have to say that he proved me wrong what my thoughts about paper were because I'm usually not a big fan of glossy paper, but I think for this image in particular it really worked fantastic. The poppy colors, the wet floor, I think come out really, really greatly with the glossy paper, which is a very good example how your choice of paper can correspond to your choice of image. Luke has many other prints available for sale, so if you are interested, you should head to his website and take a look at his prints. Last but not least, we have something that I almost feel bad for only getting now because it was already released in 2018 and I honestly wanted to get my hands on a copy forever, but for whatever reason, I only managed to do so now. But good art, of course, is timeless and it's never too late, so finally, here it is. And before we take a closer look, please allow me to include this little gimmick that probably only the people who know who published this might understand. Dieses Buch wurde gekauft, bevor Borut Peterlin reich und berühmt wurde und behauptete, ein Mittel gegen das Coronavirus gefunden zu haben. This book is called A Father's Tale by Borut Peterlin, a Slovenian fine art photographer who is using antiquarian processes such as wet plate collodion. In this book, Borut is exploring fatherhood and what it means for him to, to be a parent with, as he says in his words, all of the fears but also all of the delights that come with it. And when flipping the book, I also get a good sense of the ambiguity, having images that are kind of um, joyful, having safety and all the good emotions that you have surrounded your loved ones and surrounded your family. While on the other hand, also having those more moody, dark, 
almost dangerous feeling images that probably um, tackle the alert that you have as a parent, always being cautious that something might happen. The images in here remind me a lot of Sally Mann's work, which Boot is also stating is one of his biggest inspirational sources, all kind of paired with his own style and own methods. Because he's using these antiquarian processes, mostly doing a wet plate collodion, but also doing all of the printing in his own darkroom, which at least for me shows that he has full artistic control over every step in the process and every choice in here was done completely conscious, which I think is really fascinating. And me trying to explain all the thoughts that went into the book I think wouldn't make it justice. But the one who is doing a way better job on that is Borut Petelin himself because he also has a YouTube channel where he dedicated a couple of videos on the whole process of making this book. He for example has a video on the exhibition that was accompanying the publication of the book as well as in-depth kind of uh, thought processes how he chose specific images, why he decided for a specific sequencing, also going in depth on the different kind of chapters and mood changes that the book has, which honestly I think is a very, very insightful way to get a glimpse of the thinking of a creative, fabulous mind such as Boot and get the idea what kind of thought process is behind putting something like this together. Apart from that, Borut is also doing fantastic videos on his adventures, taking photos in the Slovenian woods, which are just so soothing and so inspirational to watch, which I can definitely recommend. All in all, I find his work and his channel to be very inspirational on the one hand, but also very knowledgeable on the other hand, because he also has several videos on uh, the print processing and everything that is surrounded by that. And I can only say that I have been a big fan for years and I'm happy to finally get a copy um, of this in my hands, because I can surely say that this is one of the best things I have picked up probably ever. As always, all of the artists I have mentioned in this video will also be linked in the description box down below. So if there was something in particular that spoke to you, please check them out and take a look at their work. After the last episode, I got some really, really incredible recommendations. So thanks a lot for that. They are not forgotten. I will keep them in mind and probably get back to some of those sooner or later. But if there is anything else that you have been enjoying recently that you think is worth checking out, leave a comment down below so that I and maybe some other people that are watching or reading this can also take a look. The situation is probably not going to change anytime soon, so once I am sick and tired of takeout, there will be a new episode. Until then, see you in the next one.